I'm not a biologist, Jim, but I've read a lot of biology. And in recent days, it does seem that the neo-Darwinist consensus is falling apart. And people like my colleague in Oxford, Dennis Noble, fellow of the Royal Society, say it doesn't need to be extended. It needs to be replaced. The scientist in me, and I'm a very limited scientist compared with you, says, well, what is your evidence? Because uh, talking about human beings, they are living beings. So the first thing to ask about is, show us your uh, processes for the origin of life itself. And the biogenesis is a totally unsolved problem today. As you know, in terms of chemistry, biology, physics, and everything else. People just don't know. And of course, the more advanced we've become in understanding the genetic basis of life, we realize there we're dealing with language-like material. And one of the things that does not occur through random, unguided, at least biological processes, is the generation of the kind of information we find, say, in DNA, let alone the vastly more complex levels of information that are beginning to come out in systems biology, the epigenetic phenomena, we just haven't a clue how those develop. And therefore, I say to people who say we've, we've reached this stage and we can move further, give us evidence that the mechanisms you propose and they normally are natural selection and mutation, but I'm not a biologist, Jim, but I've read a lot of biology. And in recent days, it does seem that the neo-Darwinist consensus is falling apart. And people like my colleague in Oxford, Dennis Noble, fellow of the Royal Society, say it doesn't need to be extended. It needs to be replaced because it, it just can't do the job. The whole thing is far too sophisticated. So I find this kind of development really interesting. But coming at it from a Christian perspective, I think humans 1.0 are very special. And my reason for that is the central claim of Christianity or the central fact of Christianity is that God became one. And that is staggering to my mind. Humans are so special, made in the image of God, which, incidentally, as Jordan Peterson recently said in a very interesting lecture, this is the cornerstone of civilization. We neglect it at our peril that we're made in the image of God. Now, Jordan, not Pe only Jordan made in Peterson the image of God. Jordan yeah, Peterson absolutely. said you, that. That you need surprises to watch me. His lectures on Genesis are full of fascinating discussion. But the point is that, as John says in his gospel, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God became human. Now, that's staggering. But that is the central thing that I'm committed uh, to because I believe it to be true. It may be unfathomable. But it's the only thing that makes sense of what we see in the life, death, resurrection, ascension of Jesus Christ. It's the only explanation that makes sense. And I would much prefer as a scientist to accept an explanation that makes sense over against one that makes no sense whatsoever.